Hey, how's it going? I'm Father Francis and welcome to Faith for Today. You know, in our 30th Sunday readings uh, on this Cycle B series of readings in the lectionary, we read this from the Psalms. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. I really like that verse. You know, it's uh, something that we don't always, I guess, talk about uh, in, at least, you know, in, in a lot of homilies, sermons, messages that I hear. You know, usually the topic matter is a little bit more somber, you know, kind of a little bit more introspective, kind of challenging people to kind of, you know, evaluate. Um, you know, or, you know, take an inventory of their lives and kind of compare and contrast where they kind of measure up. You know, that's kind of the, the general theme, you know, this is what God says, this is kind of where we're at, you know, and we need to do better and, you know, so on and so forth. And I certainly know that that tends to be, <laughs> tends to be my homiletic style sometimes too. But uh, there, <laughs> believe it or not, we are really told that the Christian faith is supposed to be uh, one of uh, rejoicing uh, in God, in life. Um, and, I, you know, I have to just tell you that, uh, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I remember, and I've always remembered uh, these because I don't do it a lot, is uh, when I've had a really good belly laugh. When was the last time you've had a really just wonderful laugh? Now, you know, I have to say that when you watch a lot of sitcoms, you know, some of those jokes are kind of, uh, well, they're just in bad taste, a lot of them. Uh, and I have to say that uh, recently, one of my favorite radio programs, I won't mention the name because it probably doesn't uh, help anybody, but uh, maybe some people can figure it out. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a radio show that I've loved for almost 20 years, maybe a little bit longer. And uh, I used to have a lot of homespun, you know, entertainment and folk songs, but Lately, the, 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 the humor has just become raunchy, you know? It's uh, toilet-type uh, humor, you know, potty humor, and I'm like going, why do people want to laugh at that? But uh, I remember one of the best little laughs I've had in, in, in years, and it was back when I was in seminary. Now, I, before I go any further, yes, I have laughed since seminary, okay? Uh, but, uh, and I love, I love to have, uh, hear a good joke, and I, I love to share good jokes with people. Um, and, and so this is one of the jokes that uh, my, my best friend uh, kind of gave to me one day. And again, I have to tell you that I was in a frame of mind where I was, oh, kind of pessimistic and, you know, kind of, I wasn't in a good mood, let me put it that way. And usually when I'm in, not in a good mood, uh, chances are to get me to laugh is going to be quite a challenge. So my friend who's an electrician, his name is Don, uh, we were working, I was working with him on a house and we were doing uh, what was called a rewire job. And basically, you know, I just was helping him run wire. And he was up on the roof and I was down there, you know, and he says, okay, God, give me some more wire. And I'm giving you some more wire. So we're kind of doing this thing and he's kind of measuring things out. And so finally, he's, you know, as he's doing that, it's kind of, you know, for him, it's kind of a, a mindless task. He's done it, you know, thousands and thousands of times. He says, hey, I heard a joke the other day. You want to hear it? And I said, sure, let me hear it. So he says, well, it's this little girl in Sunday school class. And uh, the teacher comes in Sunday school class and there's like six or seven little, you know, first graders. And uh, so she's the Sunday school teacher. She's really excited and wants to really kind of, you know, get the kids interested and more active and involved in their Sunday school class. So she says to the, the, these kids and this one little girl, you know, she says, okay, boys and girls, I want to ask you a question. And here it is Sunday school. What is a small four-legged animal, has brownish gray fur, has a big fluffy tail, lives in trees, and stores acorns for the winter? All these little kids are kind of looking around at each other, you know. And, and not, but they're not raising their hand. No one's volunteering, you know, to offer a, an answer. And, and finally, the teacher goes, well, doesn't anybody know what, what I'm talking about? And finally, this one little seven-year-old girl stands up and says, well, I know the answer is Jesus, but it sure sounds like a squirrel to me. 
Now, again, it was, now some of you might think, you thought that was funny? Well, they say that the secret to good comedy is timing. And it's not just so much the comedy of the delivery on the part of the deliver of, of the per person telling a joke, but it's also the part of timing on the person hearing a joke. Because I was in a, a, a particular blue funk frame of mind, and that joke just caught me off guard, knocked me down just about emotionally and psychologically, and I just I just could not stop laughing. I mean, we both, my best friend and I, we, I was so concerned because he was up on the roof, I thought he was going to fall down, you know, he was laughing so hard. We both literally were rolling and just, just laughing with, with, the, with this wonderful belly laugh kind of thing. And I think sometimes we miss the point, uh, we, or we don't make the point, that the Christian faith is supposed to be one of joy. It is supposed to be one of, of, of merriment in many ways. I mean, you know, we're not supposed to walk around glum and kind of, you know, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. You know, that's, that's not what we're called to. We're called to be filled with the joy of uh, Christ. The joy of the Lord is our strength, we're told. Now, that doesn't also mean to go around walking around with a 25 hours left to kill soul for first. I know some. Don't say that. <laughs> So they walk around with this big <laughs> 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 frowning all the time. You know, frowns all the time. I can't, I can't. Okay, 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 knock off, okay. <laughs> I got the giggles, okay, all right. <laughs> I know some people who, who do that, and uh, it, it's, it's very, very uh, difficult because you kind of say, well, come on now, is that real? Come on, you know, everybody, nobody walks around like that. You know, and, and we, have to, we have to realize that we have to be real in our joy, but that again, that doesn't mean that we go around putting on, you know, these big frowns on our face either. So you can have fun is my point today. You can have fun in the faith. Uh, and certainly, you know, the, the gospel is not opposed to, to joy and fun because if you are living your life, you know, Jesus is asked, which is the greatest commandment or commandments? And he basically tells them with love God with everything. Basically, that's what it is. And then love your neighbor basically the, with, as yourself. You know, most of us, if, when we fall in love with God and we discover God, you, you can't tell us not to be excited and joyful. Uh, it is an automatic, natural byproduct, you know, and, to, and then to share that with others uh, in a loving and giving way, you know, it just is natural. So today, I would just say allow the joy of God to, you know, uh, fill your life to the full and then take that joy and share it with others. May God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.